One shot is all you get. Crimson Trace rifle scopes help you take aim when that shot comes. Purpose built with maximum features, versatility, and a lifetime warranty. Crimson Trace will elevate your performance in moments that matter. Keep your powder dry, lock, stock, and barrel. We'll talk about anything related to guns. It's Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Call now, 866-TALK-GUN. Yeah, we will actually talk about almost anything. <laughs> Generally about guns, but sometimes we go pretty far uh, afield, if you will. Talk about almost anything. Uh, 866-TALK-GUN is the number here. If you'd like to give us a call or just call Tom Talk Gun. Scott's done that. Out of Carson City, Nevada, he's got a couple of questions. Red flag laws. Let's start with that one, Scott. Okay. Uh, the question I had is that if in you know, red flag laws, are they something that if your gun firearms are taken away, and this, by the way, is hypothetical, mm-hmm. if firearms are taken away, are they returned if a case is not made, or is it something that you are allowed to appeal, and if you can spend the money to convince a judge that, that then they may be returned to you? Generally, the, question, the answer is yes. You get your guns back. If someone makes a red flag complaint against you and the police come and take your guns away for some claim that you made a threat to somebody or maybe you are, they think you're a danger to yourself and you get a chance to go, you know, have your day in court and you convince the judge that no, that's not the case, then you should get your guns back. How that is done is going to vary state to state. Uh, It could cost you, and this is where it really gets to be ugly. It could cost you thousands and thousands of dollars to go through the legal process to get your guns back to prove that you were not a danger and you did not make a threat. And of course, the other thing to understand that people need to understand about this is at no time in this process when your personal property has been taken away from you, were you ever charged with a crime? There was simply an accusation made. But yes, you should and would be able to get your guns returned to you, but it is an onerous process and it lacks due process. And generally speaking, you do not have your day in court before they come and take your stuff. They take your stuff and now it's up to you to prove that you should be able to get it back. And that's backwards, of course. Yeah, but my question was in terms of, I think, is that they have to, that you have to prove, not that they have to prove. Correct. Oh, yeah. That's what's wrong with it. Because oh, yeah. there's, the idea. There's, there's a lot of stuff wrong with it, but yes, that's right. Look, I've got a guest waiting for me, so I do want to get to this. You had another question about giving a, a gift, a gun as a gift for Christmas. Yeah, I just wanted to extend upon your comment about about giving firearms as gifts. Mm-hmm. If you're giving it to somebody, like say Tom Gresham, that has a, knows a lot about firearms, sure, go ahead. But if you're going to give a gift of a firearm to someone, especially a child, with no experience, and you're not going to make the commitment to familiarize that person, then it's a, I think it's a really, really, really bad idea. I literally in my lifetime don't know anybody who's given a gun to a child without a commitment to help that child learn about guns. Do you? Um, I've come, personally, I've come close. Okay, so the answer is no. I, I, Okay, me okay. either. So, so not, it, it's a non-issue. I understand what you're saying and where you're going, it, and I make that point myself often. If you're going to give yeah. a gun to someone uh, for a gift for any time, what would be a good idea is to include training with that. Obviously, if it's a gun for a youngster, then that youngster doesn't get to have the gun, doesn't get to keep the gun. The gun is locked up. It only comes out when you're doing training or going shooting with that person and all the rest of it. But, yeah, I, I think it's a... It's a non-factor. If it were a big deal, we would be hearing a lot about it. Look, I appreciate your call, but I've got to run because we have so much news to talk about. It is, for me, the most wonderful time of the year. I'm not even talking about Christmas. It's the time when we get announcements of new guns coming out. And the folks at Ruger are about as busy as anybody and maybe more so than everybody else. It's just crazy how many new guns keep getting announced from Ruger. So Mark Gurney joins us again because, Mark, I just was looking at all these press releases you're turning out. I can't even keep up with how many guns you guys are turning out. I, I wish I could keep up, and I, I hope my boss thinks I'm keeping up, but we're, we're trying. <laughs> trying. Well, I'm actually... And I, I told Jim before we went on there, I said, I'm a little bit afraid of this interview because I know 
about some of the guns that are coming, and I don't know which ones I can talk about yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, and I know you do, you do the same thing. You're thinking, okay, uh, those are not out yet. We can't talk about those, and those we can talk about. So what are the ones we can talk about right now? We'll, we'll, we'll do our best, Tom, and we'll, we'll just use each other for cover, and then I guess they could talk. <laughs> They could fire both of us at the same time. This, this is true, and, and, they're, and they're not above doing that. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we uh, we try to stack up a bunch of stuff right before SHOT Show. Like you said, this is the most wonderful time of the year, and get them you know, released by the end of the year. And then we save a few for, you know, right before SHOT and then SHOT itself. So, mm -hmm. But we had, you're right, we had a big stack of them go out and uh, – Frankly, I had to pull up our press release on our website to do some homework to make sure I knew what they all were. So I didn't, it I was, didn't lose track. So. It was crazy how I looked at this press release, and usually it's a gun, right? And I just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, going, oh, yeah. "Holy smoke! How many guns did you guys release?" Oh, I don't know, but 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 we could lump them together in groups okay. like we talk. About. All and, right, and it go makes ahead. Sense. So, did you want to start with with handguns or rifles? Sure, <laughs> uh, let, let, handguns. Let's do that. Okay. All right, so. You know the, the the what the standard pistol in 1949 became the Mark One, Mark Two, II, Mark Three, Mark Four. Now we're up to. Okay, we're talking, about, we're talking about a 22 rim fire uh, handgun, which actually goes all the way back to the first gun that Bill Ruger introduced. That's right. That's what he built his company on. It was a a fifty thousand dollar investment by by Alexander Sturm's mother in 1949. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no kidding. I wish I could get my mom to do that. Then, uh, and it, that grew ever since. But that gun has been in continuous production. And actually, uh, Bill was, I understand from a story from Steve Sinetti, that Bill was very, very proud of the takedown system that he put into that gun. And the rest of us, you know, we I think was it was. I was going to say, it, I hated it. Are you kidding me? I, I, was, I was asked to work at a promotion up at a retail store in Vermont, and they, uh, they actually advertised that the Ruger rep would be, would be there, that's me, to demonstrate how to take those guns apart and put them back together. <laughs> and, I, and I saw the sign on the door, and I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I, I need a manual and a YouTube video. Okay? I mean, I can do it, but it takes me some time. So so the Mark IV version fixed all that. There's a little button right. on the back, and, and frankly, the upper separates from the lower, much like an AR-15 does. You know, you, you push a button. Okay. Tip it, Lift it off, and it's it's just a wonderful thing. So, it only took us you know sixty years to get there, but yeah, we we got it. It's okay, good. so what what's the new part of this then? So every year for the last I don't know half a dozen or so years, I really don't remember. We've had a kind of the New Year's version of the Mark IV in the twenty two forty five light version. So mm -hmm. the light is uh, is an aluminum upper rather than a steel upper, so it's lightweight. And because it's aluminum, you'll get the anodized, and we can anodize them in different colors, and we can, uh, uh, you know, machine them in different shapes and ventilated patterns. And, and, the, grip, yep. and the grip is wonderful on the 2245. It just is. Oh, yeah, so the reason it's called the 45 is it's, it's, it's a 1911 type grip. So it, it's right. got the same grip angle, controls are in the right place. And if you like 1911s, you, you're going to like the Mark IV 2245. Okay. Uh, so so this year has the uh, it's a, a, a diamond gray anodized upper, uh, and it has a, a gold plated. It's not 14 karat gold, but a gold plated uh, barrel and trigger. So it's pretty trick looking. Yeah, I'm, say, I'm, look, I'm looking at it now. It looks good. It comes yeah. with threaded ba threaded barrel, and so that you can obviously throw a, a suppressor on there. Right, and then there's a, a pick rail on the top for, for red dots, and mm -hmm. of course you got you know fully adjustable sights. And, you know, it's one of those things, I say this a lot, a lot about our guns, but you, if you can't have fun shooting this, you can't have fun. I mean, it's, it's just a I group. agree. You know, and the other thing is, for those who don't know, this is a very lightweight gun. This was a great gun. If you took this and dropped a red dot on it, this would be an ideal type package to introduce somebody to handgun shooting. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you said a red dot because a, a, a number of, I'm going to say, folks around my age, we get kind of... I hear them say, well, my, my kid's going to learn on iron sights first. And, and yes, iron, iron sights are a skill that must be mastered. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But I think the first few times out with, a, with any gun, you want them to have fun. You know, give yes. balloons to pop or, or well, my, my favorite uh, uh, sidewalk shot. And the way you have fun is to hit stuff. 
And yeah. you don't you don't have to explain rear sight, front sight, notch. Keep the front sight down at the t this level. Have the same amount of light showing on each side of the front sight. Yada yada. Everybody understands. Oh, you put the dot on the th thing and pull the trigger. Done. Yes, exactly. And then they can move on to to, to real sights at some point. Yes. You want them to have. You want them to ask, "Can we go shooting?" Of, of course we can. You know, that's yes. the cool thing. Yeah. Okay, so all right, so you got a new uh, 2245 light, very cool. I'm looking yep. at the picture of that. Uh, again, yep. all this stuff is on the, the Ruger website. Uh, yep. Yep. All right, tell you what, I'm going to do this before we move on. I've got to do a quick break here. We're going to come on because, like I said, this is a whole shopping list of new stuff from Ruger. And also during this time break, now Mark Gurney can go and check and make sure. Okay, what can we talk about and what can we not talk about? <laughs> so because there's so much stuff coming out here, Mark Gurney, hold on a second here. We'll get back with more of the news from Ruger. If you'd like to be a part of this, or if you have a Ruger question, Mark is actually a real world, real live engineer. And uh, he can answer any question. Well, it's like me. We can make it up. 8-866-TALK-GUN. Be right back. The Smith & Wesson M&P 380 Shield Easy Pistol revolutionized personal protection with its easy-to-use design. Now, enter the M&P Shield EZ in 9mm. Built for personal and home protection, the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Shield Easy Pistol features the same easy-to-rack, easy-to-load, and easy-to-shoot design of the M&P Shield Easy series. Available at a retailer near you. Find out more at smith-wesson.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. Brownells.com is your home for all things firearms. Looking for a retro rifle? How about the BRN 180 or 180S? Named one of SHOT Show's best products of 2019. Visit Brownells.com for guns, ammo, reloading equipment, or anything you need to customize your firearm. And enjoy the industry's only guaranteed forever satisfaction policy. To stay up to date with the latest and best deals from Brownells, text BRN to 556-223. Talking with Mark Gurney from Ruger, that company out there that makes a few guns now and then. Mark, how many plants do you guys have, by the way? Well, we have three main factories. We got uh, the one in here in New Hampshire, uh, one in Arizona, in Prescott, Arizona, mm -hmm. and newest one in Mayodan, North Carolina. Oh, okay, cool. Is there like a division of like one makes handguns, one makes rifles, or how does that work? No, it, it used to be easy until until Mayden came online, and they, oh, I say this with all affection, they screwed it all up. So it used to be in, in New Hampshire, we made everything. And right. then uh, then Arizona was opened to make pistols, specifically the P-85. And mm -hmm. Bill Ruger thought he was going to win the military contract, so he invested in a big factory. He, he needed to invest in more space anyway, so it worked out fine. Right. So it used to be Arizona made pistols, and, and uh, New Hampshire made everything else. And then now Mayadan makes a little bit of everything. So they make uh, all our ARs. They make almost all the American rifles, SR-22s, LCPs. So they, and they're a, they're a textbook lean manufacturing masterpiece of a factory. They, they do a great job down there. Okay, so new guns. So we just talked about the, uh, the 2245 light. What else you got? Right. Well, in the same family, but probably as, as diametrically opposed of a gun to that 2245 light, we have the Mark IV targets with a 10-inch barrel. So hmm. those are those are all metal framed with a steel upper, big, long, heavy barrel, wonderful sight radius, and because of its weight, very heavy in your hand. So if you like to uh, if you like to print little groups mm -hmm. with with target pistol, this is the way to do it. So it's, okay. a, it's, a, again, it's a probably a, probably a very you know uh, zen thing at this type of target shooting. I happen to like it a lot, that kind of shooting. Um, and it's 
of course, they're they're really impressive looking too. You you get your money's worth when you hold on to this thing <laughs> by right. pound and and just the right. visual. Okay, yeah, they're beautiful. Uh, and then we have a, a another SR nineteen eleven in our Ruger Custom Shop. And the first gun was a you know a Koenig competition gun. Right. This is concealed carry officer style forty five all steel gun. So a, you know a compact nineteen eleven and forty five. But what a delightful gun! The, you know the slide to frame, slide to barrel fit are all hand fitted. Has uh, cylinder and slide trigger components in it, so it's a just a oh. wonderfully crisp trigger. And if you mm-hmm. like 1911, people who like 1900s really, really like a, a nice, well-fitted 1911. Now, is this so available in a 45, or is it 45 and 9? It's right now. It's 45. Uh, okay. You know, the custom shop guns. We're kind of you know, sending them out one at a time. We really want to mm-hmm. do a nice job with them and and make sure people can can appreciate them and understand them, and not uh, we don't want to kind of cloud up too many things too quickly. Mm-hmm. But it would be one of those things that you can have to get your hands on one. And just all you have to do is rack the slide. Wow, this is this well, is really. I I know I did that on the the full size Kendrick version and just kind of go, oh my! It's it's like it's on ball bearings. It's just so well made. It, it, and so, this is a carry gun with that kind of quality. Yes, and you know we uh, the nice competition pistols might come out of the safe of competition and go back in. But what do we carry every day? And mm-hmm. no reason you carry a nice gun every day. I mean, no, exactly. We hope to you know, we never have to use it. Just, While you're uh, on the subject of, of handguns, I have to r- let you remind people, you guys are still very much in the revolver world, and you keep bringing out new stuff there as well. We do, and, and that was the second press release <laughs> that you were talking about. So, you know, we had a custom shop uh, called a Super GP, mm-hmm. and that was, you know, all nice hand-tuned, fitted-up action that, that's lovely. And the first model was in uh, 357 and 38. And the secret to the Super GP is actually not a GP100. If you know our product line really well, it's actually built on a Super Red Hawk frame. Oh. It's a lock gun. Okay. Uh, and you know how the Super Red Hawk has this, this snout on the frame that sticks out the front. Right. Um, we actually, just, we just cut that off and put a Red Hawk barrel on it. Hmm. So okay. you get the, the unable action of the Super Red Hawk, and it's, of course, is very stout. And because it's larger, on the 357 38 version, it's, a, it's an eight-shot revolver. Right. So it's a big, heavy, eight-shot 357 revolver, and it's, it's just a delight to shoot. And then we just announced the same gun in 9 millimeter. And Interesting. Will, and, will, and, the, and, and the cylinder th- arrangement on it just looks a little bit different. It, yes, it does. You, to say and, the least. And for people who understand why it is the way it is and and shoot it, they they think the world of it. First time I thought of it, like, huh, well, that's interesting. The cylinder mm-hmm. is what uh, two thirds the length of, of a standard cylinder, and then the right. barrel protrudes from the frame through back to the because you don't need a long cylinder in nine millimeter. Well, you, really exactly. Like You've got a shorter it. cylinder, but you also yes. still have the large frame. So you can't have Correct. this bullet leaping out into the air before it hits the barrel. So you actually right. ran the barrel back through the frame and extends into the yoke area, if you will. Does that sure. seem fair? Yeah, absolutely. And so not only are you not requiring the bullet to make a, a leap, but you reduce the mass of the cylinder significantly. Oh. So it rotates that much faster faster and easier, so your double action pull is lighter. So for the, for the competition guys, getting between targets really fast, okay. you shoot them that faster. Uh, and, all, and also eight shot? Also eight shot, and it runs on moon clips. Mm, and that's another nice. one thing you have to try to learn to appreciate. It's, you, mm-hmm. know, you just pop them out, drop them in. I don't, I don't think there's a faster way to reload a, a, a revolver. Right, and you talk about having almost no recoil, and oh yeah, by the way, the ammo oh, yeah. is just dirt cheap in nine millimeter these days. Yes, and wow, so that's cool. And we're shooting it for accuracy, and and frankly, I could do better with it, you know, at uh, kind of a ten yard indoor range, than I could do with my custom shop nineteen eleven. Oh, that's saying something. Yeah, I was, I was, I don't know if I was surprised or kind of put off because I really have a lot of faith in that in in my personal custom shop 1911 but all in all it's a good thing because hey you know good shooting guns or which one do you choose from that's a real hard that's a real good 
question to have, right? All right. Now, I am assuming in typical Ruger fashion these days that if we are talking about them, they are actually available. They are, absolutely. We, we, we make them. We don't launch them. We have them made. That's, that's pretty standard. Right. Exactly right. Okay. Let's uh, jump over to long guns. Sure. So, so last year, about this time, we came out with the Hawkeye long-range target. And really, but if you're familiar with the, like the M40 style style target rifle, you know it's a bolt action, right? Uh, but not in the style of the precision rifle. Okay. Far more traditional, even though it has a very vertical uh, vertical grip, wide forend, box magazine, but it's still kind of a traditionally styled gun. So it's on the Hawkeye. It's a, uh, it's a control round feed gun, and I particularly like those type of guns when you know shooting prone or shooting from the bench. Because you can really control, I mean, it's not, it's not the reason for control around feed, but you can ease the brass out and you know, just pop it in your hand, drop it on the, the bench next to your gun. I've been trying for years to get them to drop back into the cartridge box, and I, I've yet to do that. But, so <laughs> one, of, one of these days, Tom, I'll make it. Um, we came out that with it's three and a wind mag. Right. And followed it with 6.5 Creedmoor and then 6.5 PRC. And, and, you know, there's the holy trinity right there of long-range sure. cartridges. Right. Um, but we just popped it out in uh, in 308, which, you know, let's, let's not forget 308 is out there. It's still a wonderful cartridge. And right. A lot of us know a lot about it and know what kind of ammo we like. And then in 204 Ruger. And 204 that, that Ruger, cool. That's a lot of play these days. That's a cool cartridge, man. Yes, it is. All right, here's what I'm going to have to do. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut us off because I know there's still more for us to talk about. And oh, yeah, yeah, there's also. Oh, but wait, go ahead. You got 30 seconds. Okay. So then there's one more version of that. It's on the uh, it's on the Ruger American Rimfire. So it's set up with the same style of, of target stock. You know, an adjustable comb, adjustable length of pull, pick rail on top. It is out of all of them. This is my favorite. Blinky was one too. Love it. That is terrific. We got so much more to talk about, and maybe next time we could talk about one of the uh, very cool things you guys have been working super secret. We'll be able to talk about. That's all I can say. Mark won't let me say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Garney, thank you so much. When we get to shot show, we'll be able to talk about all of it. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure, uh, Tom. Thank you for having me. All right, take care. Hey, don't go far. We'll have an actual real range report for you when we come back. Cool stuff. Clips, magazines, bullets, cartridges, what's all the fuss? Here's the guy with the answers, Tom Gresham. You know, it may not be over the river and through the woods, but if you're traveling over the holidays, protect your home and valuables with the Blink security cameras. Blink X-T2 cameras are motion activated. Place them anywhere, and when they detect motion, you get an alert and a video clip on your Blink smartphone app. Who is on your gift list who would love a Blink security camera? Well, a busy mom whose Blink camera alerts her when the kids get home from school and lets her chat with them using the two-way talk feature. Or the business traveler who will sleep better knowing his family is safe and secure. And don't forget grandparents. Blink X-T2 cameras are wire-free, set up a fast. They run on two AA lithium batteries for up to two years. Blink X-T2 security cameras are the perfect gift for everyone on your nice list. Save up to 25% now through December 24th on Blink cameras and systems. Plus, get a free Amazon Echo with the purchase of any system while supplies last. BlinkProtect.com slash sale. That's BlinkProtect.com slash sale. Now, last week, we had a caller who was talking about uh, having a gun stolen out of his bag when he flew on the airlines. He had his gun in a locked, small locked case inside of a suitcase. It caused me concern because I often travel that way. Certainly, you declare the firearm, but if somebody decides to open the bigger case, they could slip out the smaller locked handgun case. And then somebody was asking, well, what about the tracking systems or something? I mentioned the tile system I had read something about. I didn't have any experience with it. Well, then turns out that uh, Kevin Jernigan, also known as KJ, in our office at the Gun Talk offices, he actually has been using them for a while. So we're going to get a chance to talk with him. Uh, KJ joins us right now. Hey, partner, how you doing? Hey, good, Tom. How you doing today? Well, good. So, I mean, you sent me a note. You said, hey, I've been using these things. So why don't you give us the full range report on them? 
Well, I've, I've been using them for about a year, and that and it's the earlier or two years right now, but it's the early version. So the earlier versions didn't have batteries, and so you know after a year and a half or so, the battery actually runs out, so you'd have to replace them. Now they've got replaceable batteries, hmm. but I've been using it, and typically how it works, and a lot of there's some misconceptions about it, but it works within 200 feet of your tile, lo- your your location, uh, so your cell phone. So anywhere you'd have Bluetooth or anything, you'd have it. So okay. you put you throw it in your gun case. Is this what I do? And typically in an airport, I'm pretty close to it until I let it go out the door, and then it'll mark its last known location. And so you've got that. Now once they load that onto a plane, now you're within range. And, and but one of the cool things about it is. If anybody else has a tile locator beacon, a Bluetooth on their phone, it'll pick up off of that point. And so you actually have someone else kind of monitoring that case as well. It won't show up on their phone, but it'll read to yours where the last known location is. Okay, so it's kind of almost a crowdsourcing deal. Anybody that has the tile app running on their phone, they could actually pick up information the signal from your tile, they won't see it, but the info goes back to your phone and your app and says, oh, yeah, your gun is over here. Exactly, and you can see it on a map. So on the on the app, the tile app, you can see a map, and it's very, very close. It saved my wallet at least six or seven times. Wait, 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 wait. Your wallet? Talk to me. What, oh. what happened? Oh, I, I, throw, I throw one in my wallet all the time. I've got, you know, two or three of them. And you can uh-huh. load up a bunch of them on your phone. And so I just throw one in my wallet. They're thin enough that it doesn't create a bunch of bulk. And so, and then from the tile, you can also find your phone. You push a little button on the tile, and it'll help you locate your phone, too. <laughs> well, okay, so you can find your wallet if you have your phone, or you can find your phone if you have your wallet. <laughs> exactly. So, so it's a win-win situation all around, but but I really like them, and it kind of got me wondering after I heard that caller because I was listening to the show. I was like, well, I wonder what other things are out there that are similar to this because there's okay. got to be companies out there. And Milwaukee actually makes one called the Tick, um, and so you can buy a bunch of these, and they actually kind of work in the same manner. Um, I think the range is a little bit shorter. I think it's around 100 foot. You're talking about Milwaukee, the, the the power tool maker? The, the power tool company, yeah. Okay. And so, okay. but you can buy like ten of them for, you know, twenty or so bucks off of Amazon, and and I'm telling you, they you attach them to tools, ladders, whatever you got, you know, and for guys on the job site or especially guys on the go, just permanently attach one to your gun case. So you can lock it in. Now, okay. So what happens if you got it attached to something and you you've got your phone? Do you Push a button on the app. Does it? Does the tile like make a noise, or how do you know where it is? Yeah, the tile will make a noise, or you can track it directly from that app. But you can alert it, and it'll start sounding off. Huh, that's pretty cool. So All right, well, that, I, that, that, I, that's I enjoy. Fun. I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy just just knowing where my stuff is, and even if you know I'm traveling across country with guns in my truck, you know they're in lock cases. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw one in there because there's no telling if I walk out, you know, in a gas station real quick, and all of a sudden I come out, find that my, you know, it's gone. Well, I you can you can pick it up pretty quick. This this may be an indicator of another problem you got going there, KJ. I know <laughs> it is. Well, here's the other question: Does your wife have the app, and can she find you with it? Oh, hey, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. she does. She's got some tiles too. I got her because it's it's just so helpful. All right, tell you what I want to do. I'll keep you on here because uh, you've been on uh, some hunts recently. We want to talk about that, some of the guns you're using, and also a piece you just wrote for the newsletter. We just were talking about the, the new SIG uh, cross rifle and get your impression on that. We're talking with Kevin Jarnigan and KJ from Gun Talk. If you'd like to be a part of it, if you got some questions or just want to throw in your thoughts, 866-TALK-GUN. Are you 
looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. This is not fair. During the break, I'm getting a text of pictures from Mark Gurney at Ruger with pictures of guns I can't talk about here. This is just wrong. It's at, And KJ, you know, this is that time of year when we're hearing about all this stuff. We're shooting videos on these guns, and you're always having to figure out, okay, which one can I talk about now, right? It, it's so frustrating because, you know, Ryan sent me one of those yesterday, and I was like, oh, man, all of a sudden I'm in love with revolvers. Oh, it's just <laughs> killing me. <laughs> now, you were one of the first people to get a look at the new SIG Cross rifle, and we were talking about that earlier in, in the show uh, you know, with Patrick from SIG. But if you would describe what that was like, when, because you, you're a serious hunter. You're a backpacker, runner, athletic guy. You want to go in the backcountry, but you, you love nothing more than going out and hunting deer and elk and everything. So when you saw this rifle, talk about that reaction you had. Uh, I, it's, I, I told Ryan, I was like, that's the next gun I'm going to purchase. And I, I mean, I called it. And this is, the, this is the gun. And, Tom, you know I've got a custom 6.5 that I've worked really hard on, and I've like, got it how I wanted. But the SIG Cross is the gun I would have built had I known. <laughs> if it had been out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and it still stands true. I mean, it's been, there's, there's three or four guns coming out here in the next three weeks that will be purchased this year. Um, they're just well, you, massive you, you, launches from companies. And you this just showed me one in your office. One. You showed me one in your office the other day, and I'm thinking this is going to upset the apple cart on, on that particular Uh huh. Exactly. And, and that's what's cool about th- this time of the year is unbelievable for a bunch of these big gun companies. But I'm telling you, the SIG Cross, um, and actually, you know, I had determined that I'm going to I'm going to get the 6.5 Creed more. That's going to be the one that, that's going to be the round that I'm going to stick with. But now, all of a sudden, I'm looking at this 277 Sig Fury. Yes, it's a new caliber and a new cartridge. Yes. So you're going, okay, so we're, basically we got a 270 Winchester on steroids out of a short action. Um, it just, you know, 3, choices, choices. per second. Yeah. It just, I just, mean, it, I got I know. I, we don't, it's the thing unbelievable. Is, you've, you've worked in this business a long time, and you've worked – you know, with major gun makers, I frankly, I'm looking at what we have seen over the last two months, what we've been privileged to see, and a lot of stuff we don't even know about. I've never seen right. any period of time with this many new guns introduced. Have you? No, never. There has not. You know, we, we talk about, oh, the good old days. I think, I think we're smack dab in the middle of them right now. Well, you just went on a couple of hunts. You might just talk for a second about where you went and what you took and what you shot, both guns and critters. <laughs> I think I think the best hunt that I have been on in a long time. I didn't even get to pull the trigger. <laughs> really? I took I I yes I took I took Ryan out and we were going to go get him at White Tail. I've been telling him, hey, you got to come up to Oklahoma. And he went out, and the first night we were there, he he bust a good one, and I'm like, oh man, this is great. Well, Jace, our cameraman and our editor, he he's never shot one before, and so we signed him up right there. We got him in all his tags that he needed for Oklahoma, 
And it was the next morning, you know, he goes out and he busts another good one. And I'm, you know, I'm elated when I can like show people, you know, what, you know, not only Oklahoma has offer, but the shooting sports in general. And we were shooting a Ruger uh, Hunter, a Ruger Hawkeye uh, Mm -hmm. in the 6.5 PRC. And that was really cool to see. Um, I mean, it dropped those deer nicely. I was, I was pretty impressed. You get to a point after a while where you've shot a lot of critters, you've shot a lot of deer, and and they talk about the stages of being a hunter, and one of them is where you guys are right now, which is you start to turn around and you really get as much or more enjoyment out of bringing somebody else out and putting them on an animal as you do shooting and pulling the trigger yourself. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's the stage I wish I would have gotten to 10 years ago, Um, instead of, you know, it's all about, you know, having to get something, you know, I'm headed to Iowa this week. um, And I'm just looking at hanging out in deer camp. I'm not really worried about, you know, what I'm going to see, but you know, when it's taking someone out, I've seen two people, um, my son and Jace get their first deer this year. And those have been absolutely by far the best hunts I've been on. How old is your son? He is 11 years old, and, you know, he was grinning. And he likes to brag a little bit now because it only took him 20 minutes uh, for, from start of the hunt to the end of the hunt. We drove 11 hours all the way to Oklahoma uh-huh. for a 20-minute hunt. <laughs> what, what gun did you use? Uh, on that one, I used a uh, Thompson Center Compact. I mean, it was, nice. you know, in 22-250, um, okay. one of my favorite cartridges. And I kid you not, he shot right just a little bit high, um, right behind the shoulder, and the deer mm-hmm. dropped right there. Perfect. Beautiful 10-point, perfect shot. You know, didn't have to put another one in him. And he was he was elated, and I, I was probably a little bit more happy than he was. <laughs> now, you do an awful lot of our social media stuff and also, uh, you know, the videos. I mean, when we keep... We're cranking out videos so fast, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> you might just explain, if people want to kind of keep up, particularly with the lives, because you and Ryan do live streaming a lot. How do people oh, yeah. you know, follow all that? Uh, really, it's just enabling your notifications for your Facebook, and uh, they call it ringing the bell. Um, that will notify you on YouTube. Those are really the best ways to keep up with that because we're going – we're going live at least once a week on our Facebook and YouTube as a kind of a sit down, you know, kind of a well-produced piece. And then, you know, this week I'm going to be headed to Iowa. So follow along on Instagram. Um, That's gun talk media on Instagram and just keep up with me and see what I'm doing out in Iowa. And then the other thing we're doing is we're going to be doing a whole bunch of live feed videos from the shot show where as things are breaking and we have new products being introduced, we can talk about them there so, I mean, it'll be like every hour we're going to be doing videos there. Yep, it's every hour, and, and I encourage people because some of this stuff, you know, we haven't, you know, seen before. And so a lot of these companies are some of the smaller companies that you might not hear a lot about, but you're going to want to see. You're going to want to check it out. Um, and those are pod, those casts only last about 15 or 20 minutes, right. so you got to get in there quick. I mean, KJ's running around the floor. He'll come running back to the booth. He'll go, hey, have you guys seen this? These guys have a <laughs> It's like almost breathless. He'll go, well, well, go get them. So he runs over to their booth and grabs them and drags them over. We, we drop them in front of the cameras and go, tell us about this thing. This is cool. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, I'm telling you, this is a great time to be in the gun industry. And, uh, man, it, it's, but it's a hard time for those guys, those shooters that are looking forward to stuff coming out because it's not necessarily – a lot of it not, not necessarily launched – the day they announce it. <laughs> and so it's right. kind of tough to wait. <laughs> yeah, all right. But we'll have all the news as quickly as we can talk about it. But if you follow us on Facebook and sign up on YouTube, you ring that bell so you get the notifications. That's the way to go. KJ, thank you so much. Hey, have fun in Iowa, man. Oh, I will. Hopefully I won't get too cold. It's going to be cold. It just, just is. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> all right. You take care. Have a good Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All righty. It is open lines for you right now. If you'd like to join us, it's really easy. Call me at 866-TALK-GUN. Did you ever get a gun for Christmas? Doesn't matter how long ago it was. Call me let me know. I would love to hear the story. Hi, 
right, back with you here. Going straight to the phones. Line three, Jeff's with us out of Toledo, Ohio. Hey, Jeff, what's on your mind? Uh, I was wondering if you ever heard of the late Colonel Jeff Cooper's concept of the thumper to reach out like a 44 auto mag round to reach out to uh, 200 meters to be able to knock people down. Yes. Yeah, Jeff Cooper kind of I, came up with that. And, but, and, and while that particular cartridge didn't really go anywhere people keep kind of coming up with whatever what's the new thumper you know what would what would cooper have liked now i would have liked the 45 wind mag and then a 10 minutes longer cartridge in 454 auto i call it and i'm working on the concept cooper, late colonel cooper had sent me a letter stating that i could run with this concept because i was so enthusiastic with it yeah we corresponded by mail and on the phone and i really miss him he was a mentor of mine and, you know, people don't understand. I lost a letter in the move. I lost a letter in the move, so I just have oh, to no. stay true. But I just... let, me, let me just jump in here. Uh, Colonel Cooper was a bit of a renaissance. Well, no, not a bit. He was a true renaissance man. And if you were corresponding with him and talking with him, you understand, uh, Jeff. When, when you were talking with him, you you got a sense, didn't you, that this is a guy who was really well read and really. He had thoughts much deeper than just how to hit targets, right? Yeah, a lot deeper, many, many subjects. A brilliant, a, but really important, a brilliant man. Yeah, he was a historian. Uh, he was, uh, you know, I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, ancient history or modern history or politics or concepts, if you get a chance, and look, I appreciate the call, Jeff. Thank you very much. If you go over to the, uh, the gun site website, G-U-N-S-I-T-E dot com, uh, in their pro shop, they have the books written by Colonel Cooper. You know, that, it might it wouldn't get there in time for Christmas, but if you want to treat yourself, just had that thought. That wouldn't be bad. Some of his books, he was such a good writer and such a deep thinker, much more so than gee, how do we shoot fast and hit stuff? And a lot of people just don't understand or don't, they don't know that about him. Uh, that would be kind of a, a treat you could give yourself, just kind of thinking out loud. Now, did you hear about the uh, the FedEx driver in Philadelphia? He was attacked. He was robbed. He was shot in the process of being robbed. But this FedEx driver decided, no, nah, I'm not going to put up with that. So he pulled his gun out and fired several shots. He killed his attacker. The FedEx driver did. And then he gets in his truck and drives away and then goes like into a parking lot. He's found slumped over the steering wheel. They get him to the hospital. They're going to be able to patch him up. He's going to survive. The bad guy didn't. One of the first things, at least in the first news reports, the police chief said, well, we're checking to see if the driver had a permit to carry that gun. Really? Who the heck cares? He's alive because he had a gun. The bad guy shot him and tried to kill him. He's alive because he had a self-defense gun and he knew how to use it. Now, in later reports, it turns out the FedEx driver did, in fact, have a permit. He had a carry permit. What's unknown at this time, I think we can probably all guess, is what action FedEx is going to take. Generally, these companies do the whole CYA. Their lawyers get involved. They go, well, you know. Uh, we have to say that our drivers can't do that, and the only way we can do that is to fire this guy, so he may get fired. And of course, we've all, a lot of us have said this before, is, you know what, if I have to use my gun in self-defense and it saves my life, then getting fired is a pain in the rear and it's terrible, but I'm willing to take that risk. And in this case, this guy tried to stay alive. <laughs> Jim says, Jim says, hey, I'd promote the guy. I think that's a great idea. Uh, and I hope somebody, if he, he does get fired, I hope somebody else will hire him. There you go. All right, 866-TALK-GUN will get you in there. When we come back, we're going to get uh, a bit of an update on what's going on on the political front. I'm calling 2020 the year of the big gun fight, whether it's the Virginia-style thing that's going on, or you getting involved, or the presidential election. It's for all the marbles. 